It was developed in the early 1950s. It was made to operate from aircraft carriers. It's so small that it doesn't need folding wings. It has a single turbojet engine, a delta wing, and a long undercarriage. It is an attack aircraft, but it can outturn almost every fighter on the planet. Still, it can carry the same bomb load as a B-17, and even a nuclear bomb. It was a co-star in the movie Top Gun, and it was used by the Blue Angels for 12 years. The A4 Skyhawk is indeed something special. Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm an airline captain with an interest for aviation history. In June this year, I visited Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum in New York. One of the airplanes on display is the Douglas A4 Skyhawk. It was introduced in 1954. It's older than me and it's still going strong. Not only has it been in service for more than 65 years, but it's one of those aircraft that deserves to be called a pilot's airplane. One of those machines you strap to your back. Pilots just love to fly it. In this video, I will give an introduction to the aircraft and then I will show you some interesting quirks and features of the A4 Skyhawk. In the early 1950s, the US Navy asked for a light attack airplane to replace the Douglas Sky Raider. Maximum weight should not exceed 30,000 pounds and the unit cost should not exceed 1 million US dollar. Edward Ed Heinemann, the chief engineer at Douglas Aircraft Company, claimed that he could build an aircraft with half the weight. Ha ha, they said, that's not possible. Heinemann's philosophy was to make the aircraft as simple as possible and facilitate easy maintenance. The result was the A4D Skyhawk, later redesignated the A4. The Skyhawk consists of four main components. One, the delta wing is made in one piece. Because of the short wingspan, it does not require wingtip folding. The wing has an integrated fuel tank. The main landing gear members are attached to the main wing spar and retract into fairings under the wing without affecting the structure of the wing. The result is a very light and strong wind. Two, the forward fuselage is attached to the top of the wing. It houses avionics, the nose gear, the cockpit, the air intakes and a fuel tank. To save weight, the engineers redesigned the avionics, the pilot ejection system and the air conditioning system. Three, the engine. Once the forward fuselage is in place, the engine is installed. Early A4 variants have the right J65 turbofan engine. Later variants have the more powerful Pratt & Whitney J52. The engine drives an AC constant speed generator and there are no heavy duty batteries. Instead, backup electric power is provided by Ram Air Turbine, RAT. And four, finally, the aft fuselage is attached to the aircraft. It contains the tailpipe, stabilizers and the tail hook. The aft fuselage can easily be removed to give access to the engine. An engine change requires only 16 man hours. The engine drives two hydraulic pumps, each powering two hydraulic systems. One for the flight controls and one for the auxiliary systems, which are landing gear, flaps, air brakes, tail hook, and for late Skyhawk variants, the spoilers. To save weight, there are no hydraulic backup systems. Instead, the primary flight controls have a mechanical backup, and the landing gear can be extended by gravity and aerodynamic forces. That's why the landing gear retracts forward. Another reason why the main landing gear is retracting forward is that it allows for more hard points to be attached to the aircraft. 
and if both the hydraulic and manual gear extension fail, and you are carrying two drop tanks under the wings, you can land on the tanks. They are designed for that. The prototype was designated XA4D1 and made its first flight on 22nd of June 1954. A year later, he set a world speed record for a 500 km close course at 695 miles per hour. Because of the good performance, the Skyhawk was nicknamed Heinemann's Hot Rod. Other nicknames were Scooter, Kiddy Car, Bantam Bomber, and Tinker Toy. The first production version was the A4D1. In 1962, the US Armed Forces changed the designators of the aircraft, and it became the A4A. It has an empty weight of 8,400 pounds and a max weight of 17,000 pounds, almost half the target set by the Navy. The engine produces 7,700 pounds of thrust. The B model which is displayed at the Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum as a refueling probe and a higher takeoff weight. The C model got radar and with it night and all weather capability. The D model was never built. The E model got autopilot, landing spoilers, two more hardpoints under the wings, new air intakes with split the plate and a more powerful Pratt & Whitney J52 engine. The F model got a hump on the back to house more avionics. The Blue Angels used this variant from 1974 to 1986, with all unnecessary equipment removed. Then followed two C trainers and a multitude of variants and modifications. The A4 was exported too in alphabetical order Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Indonesia. Israel, Kuwait, Malaysia, New Zealand, and Singapore. Other countries, including my home country Norway, evaluated the A4, but selected other aircraft types, like the F5 Freedom Fighter. A total of 2,960 Skyhawks have been built. The final Skyhawk and A4M left the factory in 1979. 25 years after the first flight. The Skyhawk saw combat in several theaters. The US Navy and Marine Corps used the A-4 Skyhawk in the Vietnam War. Argentina used it in the Falklands War. Israel had the Skyhawk in service for almost 50 years. And Kuwait used it during Operation Desert Storm. The Skyhawk remained in service with the US Marine Corps until 2003. It is still in service in Argentina and Brazil. In addition, there are civilian operators who, on government contracts, use the Skyhawk for training of military pilots and other services. A4 pioneered the concept of buddy air-to-air -air refueling. This allows the aircraft to supply other aircraft, eliminating the need for a dedicated tanker aircraft. A designated A4 will mount a center-mounted buddy store, a large external fuel tank with a hose reel and a refueling drogue, plus two more tanks under the wings. It was fueled up and launched. Attack aircraft will be armed to the maximum and given as much fuel as possible, up to the maximum takeoff weight. Once airborne, they will proceed to the tanker and top up the fuel tanks. They could then continue the mission with full armament and fuel tanks. The budding system also saved many airplanes from running out of fuel before they could land on the carrier. They might have burned too much fuel during the mission or they made a bolter, a missed approach, and were running low. Or they had to wait for the deck to be clear.
The engine is started with compressed air supplied by a ground unit. The F4 A, B and C use a starter probe. The probe was connected to a gear mechanism attached to the engine. Later variants allowed for compressed air to blow into the engine directly. Some Skyhawks are modified to carry a DC starter generator and batteries, allowing for engine start without assistance. Here you see an A4C starting up. When the engine is running, the air hose is disconnected and then the starter probe is removed. So, how is it to fly the A4? Apart from the first adrenaline filled minutes, the pilot soon learned to relax and enjoy the ride. The Skyhawk is very nimble and the roll rate is at least 720 degrees per second. It can alter almost everything in a dogfight. And because of its small size, it can be very difficult to see. The A4 served as an aggressor at Top Gun, and it has a 4 to 1 kill rate over the F-14 Tomcat. Let's have a closer look at the Skyhawk. This is the A4B. It was the first variant to have a refueling probe. As you can see, the probe is straight. On later models, the probe has a bend. This makes it easier for the pilot to see what's going on during refueling. Behind this panador is the connector for the engine start probe. And behind this panel door is the ram air turbine, or RAT. It serves as a backup for the AC generator and is released by the pilot. The red flag is for the gear pin, which secures the landing gear when the aircraft is not powered. The main gear has pins as well. The pins are removed after the engine has been started. On the gear door, there is a placard showing the tire pressure in the nose wheel. When operating on aircraft carriers, the pressure is 275 psi. This is very high, but necessary when you touch down hard on the deck, because the force is 3 to 4 g. When the aircraft is land-based, the pressure is 160 psi. The colored circles are index lights. They show the landing signal officer, the LSO, the angle of attack of the aircraft. A red light means the angle of attack is too low, which means you are flying too fast. Green means the angle of attack is too high, which means you are too slow. Yellow is spot on, as shown on this F-18. 
On later Skyhawk variants, the index lights were moved to the leading edge of the left wing. Early Skyhawks do not have nose steering. It is free clustering and you steer with differential braking. For precise positioning on the carrier deck, the deck crew attached a tiller bar to the nose wheel and guided it while the aircraft was moving under its own power. Nose wheel steering was introduced with the A4F model. The nose houses avionics, and this might be an inlet for cooling air. The A4C introduced a radar, which got a cooling duct here. Later models were upgraded with laser seeker and other fancy avionics. This is the air inlet for the air conditioning unit, which is accessible from the nose gear bay. And this is the air outlet. This is the static port. This is the angle of attack sensor. The pitot tube is located ahead of the windscreen. On later variants, it is located further ahead. The nose gear has a very long leg, and there are two reasons for that. First of all, the landing gear must be long enough to facilitate fuel tanks and ordnance under the wings. Secondly, the nose has a 6 degree nose up attitude, which enables the wings to produce lift when the aircraft leaves the carrier. When fully extended, the leg is too long for the wheel bay. This strut solves the problem. It is called a shortening link and ensures that the nose gear is compressed during retaction. The canopy is spring loaded open. In case of an emergency, it can be ejected with explosives. All you have to do is to pull this hanger six feet out. On the two-seater, the canopy is hydraulically actuated. The A4 is armed with two 20mm Colt Mark 12 cannons, each with 100 rounds. Later Skyhawk variants had 200 rounds. Some aircraft were modified to carry 30mm cannons. The air intakes are flush with the fuselage. From the E model onwards, a splitter plate was added to prevent turbulent boundary layer to enter the engine. This dotted red rectangle marks access door to the engine fuel controller. If the engine is running and the pilot does not respond to the cutoff sign, on this airplane the engine can be stopped by climbing on the wing and using the port engine access door to reach the throttle bell crank. Turning the bell crank counterclockwise reduces the engine to idle. By cutting the rods here and here, the bell crank can be rotated far enough to shut the engine off. The main gear retracts forward which gives space for hard points and stores under the fuselage and the wings. And as I have mentioned before, the landing gear can be lowered manually with gravity and aerodynamic forces. The pressure in the struts is adjusted to match the weight of the aircraft. And the brakes don't have anti-skid. The wheels can be changed very easy. On the gear strut, there's a jacking point. You attach a jack under here and jack it up. Remove the wheel and insert a new one. It's done in minutes. It's also easy to change the tire because the rim is divided into two parts. This big hook is part of the catapult launching system. Cables are attached from the hook to the shuttle, which runs in a track and is powered by steam. The centerline station has a capacity of 3,500 pounds. The inboard wing sections can carry 2,200 pounds each. And after the C variant, the Skyhawk got auto wing stations with a capacity of 1,000 pounds each. The leading edge slat operates solely with gravity and air pressure. There are no mechanical links between the slats on each wing, and they deploy and retract individually. The slat increases the curvature of the wing and therefore increases lift. 
it moves down at high angle of attack and retracts at about 200 knots in level flight. As you can see, it can be pushed up with ease. The slats are equipped with vortex generators, which helps the airflow to follow the wing surface, hence producing more lift and delay the stall at high angle of attack. A second row of vortex generators are located ahead of the ailerons, giving them more authority. In all, there are 37 vortex generators on each wing. This line marks the breakpoint between the forward and aft parts of the fuselage. This is an air intake for cooling air to the engine compartment. The ailerons are large and together with the short wingspan, they provide very crisp roll control. And here is an oddity. The Skyhawk has split flaps. This type of flaps was introduced in the 1930s and was used on aircraft like the DC-3, the Spitfire and other aircraft. So why use split flaps on a fast jet? I think the answer lies in the wing shape and the quest for weight saving and simplicity. A delta wing alone can produce high lift at high angle of attack, especially when it's equipped with leading edge slat. Therefore, a trailing edge flaps is less critical than for many other wing designs. A split flap is very simple and light. It increases the lift to some degree, but its main contribution is drag. This is important during approach, as the engine can run at higher power, allowing it to spill up faster in case you do a bolter, which means you miss the rest of the wires and do a touch and go. After the C model, the Skyhawk got spoilers, and they deploy automatically when the aircraft is on the ground, the flaps is down, and the throttle is in idle. They are used to remove lift and increase drag after landing, or if you have to abort the takeoff. Here you can see the aircraft landing up on the runway with flap set for takeoff and the spoiler extended. When the power is increased, the spoiler retracts. The Skyhawk has air brakes on each side of the aft fuselage. They are controlled with a switch on the throttle lever and are used to slow down in flight and for approach and landing, again to allow for higher power on landing. Below is the arrester hook. It is uh, operated by hydraulic power and held in down position with nitrogen and high pressure. This prevents the hook from bouncing when it hits the deck. On late A4 variants, under the tailpipe, there is a compartment for the gyros and AFCS, the automatic flight control system, or the autopilot. And just abeam the trailing edge of the wing, underneath there is a pressure refueling point. The leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer is moving up and down with the pitch trim, just like on conventional airliners. Late variants have a compartment for the drag chute under the tailpipe and the A4s delivered to Israel have a longer tailpipe. The rudder is special. It is made of a single sheet of metal with external bracing. This was meant to be a provisional arrangement, but it worked very well, so they kept it. The rudder has a fixed tab. It can only be adjusted on the ground just like a Cessna 172 or other light aircraft. Some late A4 variants have, on the tail fin, a second pitot tube and a housing for ECM. This looks like a combined antenna for VOR and localizer. And since we are talking about antennas, this is the VHF antenna for communication.
coming to the right hand side, there's a hatch for the liquid oxygen tank under here. And those three dark areas are hard points for J2 rockets. They were used when departing from short runways and cut the takeoff distance in half. This red oval marks the outlet for the engine cooling. Jet engines use oil to cool the hot sections, and the J65 is no exemption. What makes the J65 special is that the hot oil vapors are exhausted overboard. There is a second outlet on the port side, a bit higher up. The smoke you see on this video is vaporized oil venting from the engine. Private owners know to wipe off the oil after every flight, but in wartime operations, there was no time for cosmetics. As a result, the Skyhawks developed oil stains on both sides of the fuselage. Despite being able to refuel air to air, the endurance of the AFR is limited by the oil supply. The oil tank holds 4 US gallons, and the consumption is 1 to 2 quarters per hour. The A4E introduced the J52 engine, which recycles the oil. Therefore, no more oil spill. Let's complete the walk around. On the starboard landing gear door, there's a taxi light. And this is the shimmy dumper, which prevents vibrations in the nose wheel. Later variants got nose wheel steering here as well. And this concludes the video about the A4 Skyhawk. I hope you like it. If you have a favorite among the airplanes displayed at Intrepid Sea Air and Space Museum, please let me know in the comments below. The next museum video might be about just that aircraft. Until then, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and happy landing!